Oh, hey, what's up? Today we're just going to be deleting some nodes. Let's get into it. All right, all right. Today we're going to be pew, pew, deleting some nodes. All right, let's start with what a linked list is. Remember that we can describe a linked list as just a series of nodes. So let's look at a linked list with three nodes. Let's start with the node containing one, points to a node containing two, finally has a node containing three. This final node points to this x, which just represents null. This null work means we're at the end of our linked list. All right, we know that in our linked list, we can describe each of these nodes with a node class. So let's write that out really quickly and call that class node. Okay, we know that each of our nodes has a valid. So this one contains one, this one contains two, this one contains three. We can just call that int valid. We also know that each node points to another node. So for example, this node containing one points to this node, and this node containing three points to null. We know that pointer is always of type node, and we can call that next, because this pointer always points to the next node in our linked list. All right, one other thing. In computer science, we typically number or index our nodes or things in a sequence starting at zero. So in our linked list, this node would be at index zero, this one index one, this one index two. Let's break down the problem. We know that it wants us to delete the node from our linked list where the index is equal to k. That means there are a number of different ways they could phrase this problem. They could say, delete the node from the linked list where k equals one, for example. Well, in this case, we'd have to get rid of this middle node. So the linked list we'd spit out would be the node containing one pointing to the node containing three because we're getting rid of the middle node. They could also be like, no, no, no. We want you to get rid of the node where index equals or the k equals to two. So, okay. In this case, we'd get rid of the last node. So we just keep the first two nodes. So it'd be the node containing one pointing to the node containing two. And now this node would have to point to null because it's the new last node in our sequence. Okay, one other thing we have to remember. We're going to have to take a destructive approach. This means, let's say they give us this linked list over here and they want us to, let's say, delete the node from a linked list where k equals one. In this case, we'd be getting rid of this node. And destructive approaches are kind of like one-way streets. Once you go down them, there's no going back. So after you get rid of this node, there's no way to get this node back again. So you're pretty much just left with this. Just something to keep in mind. And with that dire warning, let's hop into that implementation. Let's get it. You know it already. Implementation time. Let's delete us some nodes. Okay, so the example we're going to use is a linked list with three nodes, and we've indexed it already. On this side, we're going to talk about the different things we have to do in order to make sure that our implementation handles every single case that the question can throw up at us. Let's start out by talking about the inputs that we have. We know that they're going to give us an int k, which is the position they want us to delete the node at, and they're also going to give us a pointer called cur. And cur will always point to the first node in our linked list. So we have that. We know that this problem in particular has a bunch of different cases that we have to keep track of. So the first thing we're going to write down is there are multiple cases. One thing they could do is let k equal to zero. This is the only case in which we change what cur is pointing to because we're going to delete the first known or linked list. If they gave us k equals two, for example, we wouldn't change cur because at the end of the day, we still want to return the original list. We just get rid of this node over here. So the main two cases that we have to think about are if we're deleting the start node, versus if we're deleting anything else. So we can just say everything else. And that's mostly for the node side of things. Well, on one, this time we have another input that we have, which is k. So in this case, they could give us troll case. So for example, they could say k equals negative one. All index, index indices start at zero. So this is not possible. They could, always give us, they could also give us k equals three, which is also not possible because our index indices only go up to two. So this is something else we have to keep track of. If k is less than zero, or if k is too large. In that case, we don't want to deal with these guys, so we're not going to make any changes to our linked list at all. We need to be able to catch these fellas. All right, so now we have to think about how we're actually going to delete nodes from our linked list. So let's get rid of these variables really quickly. Okay, 
So let's say they wanted us to get rid of this middle node, so k equals 1. One way we can think about it is that we have to connect this node at k at index equals 0 to this node at index equals 2. Because if we change this connection so that this node is now pointing at this node, Java will destroy this node since nothing is pointing at it. And that fulfills our aim of deleting the node at index or k equals 1. One way we can do this is, and let's reset this really quickly, and the one way we can do this is to have two pointers. Let's call one pointer p, let's call another pointer pre. We're going to move p to the node that we want to delete. So in this case, let's move p over here because we want to delete the node at k equals 1. Pre will always be one node behind p, so pre will point over here. In order to delete this node, all we have to do is set prev.next to p.next because this sets prev.next, which is this arrow, to point to the node that comes after p. So all we got to do, snake the zero around over here, it skips this node over here, and Java will destroy it, and we have the link list that we want because now we got rid of the middle node. So the main deletion method we're going to use is to store two pointers. We're going to store the pointers first is p. This will track the node to destroy or node to delete. Delete. And the second pointer will be called pre. This will be the previous node. It will be the node that always travels one behind pre. All right, so we got our two pointers. But how do we make sure that we get these pointers to where they need to be? We need to know that p has to move to the node at index k. So in this case, k goes 1, so move to that index. Well, in this case, they gave us two inputs. Remember, we got that k. So all we have to do is decrement k by 1. So if k started as 1 over here, we, every time we move forward, we subtract k by 1. So when k equals 0, it sh we should be at the position that we want to be at. So in this case, p would start over here k would still be equal to 1, it would move over here, k is now equal to 0, and that means we're at the place that we want to be. So if k equals 0 by the time we've moved our pointer p, then we should be at the node that we want to delete. So in that way, we can move to our desired position. Just keep moving p forward, prev will follow behind it, and decrement k by 1. So we got to move to our desired position. But here's the catch, because what if k equals negative 1 or k equals 3. In these cases, k would never be equal to 0. In this case, we would reach the end of our linked list before k ever became 0. So by the time we reach our desired position, or as close as we can get to our desired position, which would be the end of our list, we also have to check if our position is valid. Check if that position is valid. Seems like a lot of stuff to keep track of. Let's check this out and see how the code would look like. So we know that it would be public node, let's call it delete node. And we know that it takes in two inputs. So the first thing is that int k, which is the index of the node that we want to delete. The second thing is node cur, which points to the first node in our linked list. Now let's think about all the possible cases that they could throw at us. They could say that cur is just null, so there's no nodes in our linked list. And we still have to be able to keep track of that and to handle that case. All we have to do, if cur is equal, equal to null, we know that our linked list is null, so we just throw it back at them. We return null. No changes to be made here. Otherwise, then we start making our pointers. So we set node p to be cur, so it points to the first node. And in the beginning, node prev will also point to cur. And as we move these pointers, then prev will be one step behind p. Okay, now we want to move to our desired position. So what we can do is check while k is greater than 0 and if p.next does not equal to null. This makes sure that we're going to hopefully end up at k equals 0, and this makes sure that the last stop that we go to is the last node in our linked list. We don't go to the null that's beyond that. Okay, and what goes inside this loop? Well, we know that we want to, first of all, move set prev equal to p. 
Then we can set p equals p dot next. And these two steps allow p to be always one step ahead of pre. Then we just do k minus months. And this means we're decreasing k by one. So hopefully it becomes zero. So after we move to our desired position, we have to check if that position is valid. So first we have to check if k is equal to zero. And if k is not equal to zero, this means that they either gave us k equals negative one or a k that's too big for our linked list. So in this case, maybe they gave us k equals three or k equals five. It's too big, we can't delete anything. So all we have to do is return cur because there's no nodes for us to delete here. We just return to sender kind of thing. All right, in the case that if k does equal to zero, then we actually have to delete the node. So we actually got to put in some work now. If k equals equal to zero, this means they want us to delete the first node. So this is this case over here, where we actually change the cur point. So in this case, all we have to do is say cur equals cur dot next. Because now we're dealing, we move it so that it points to this node over here, for example. So we'd get rid of the first node. Else, let's say they didn't want us to get rid of the first node. So let's just reset that really quickly. Let's say they wanted us to get rid of the last node, for example, so at k equals two. Then all we have to do in this case is just set prev.next equal to p.next, which is what we did earlier. And this allows us to skip one node in our linked list, which effectively means we delete it. And at the end of the day, we know that cur will always point to the first node in our linked list. And the only time it changes is here. And even in this case, it'll still point to the new first node in our linked list. So we just gotta return our old friend, cur. All right, seems like there's a lot of different cases. Here we checked if it was null. Here we checked if the index k was correct. And here we checked if we were deleting the start node or another node in our linked list. Seems like a handful but let's try it out on a slightly more complex example. Let's do it. All right, folks, we're coming straight out of implementation into this try it out over here. Here we got a linked list with three nodes. We're gonna check three cases with this, where we gotta delete nodes at index k equals zero, k equals two, k equals three. On the right hand side, we got our code. Let's see if our code is enough to handle all three of these different problems. Let's get into it. Let's start with k equals zero. So let's go over here. This is false, so then we go over here and create our two pointers. So p and prev will both start out pointing to cur, the first node over here. All right, we check the header of our while state, while k is greater than zero. But we know that k equals zero, so that's actually false, so we never go into this while state. We go here, we check if k does not equal to zero, but it does equal to zero, so this is also false. We go here, we check if prev equals equals to p. This asks pretty much if they're pointing to the same node which is true. So we know that cur equals cur dot next. So cur will now point to the node that comes after. So it points to this node over here. And then we return cur. So it returns the linked list that starts at this node. One thing we have to know is that after this method finishes, Java will get rid of all these temporary pointers. That means there'll be nothing pointing at this node over here. Java will destroy it and we'll just be left with this linked list with two nodes, which is what we wanted because we want to get rid of this node in the first place. So Ding, 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 one for three. All right, let's go, k equals two. This is still false, we set our two pointers. Prev to cur, p also to cur. All right, k is greater than zero and p.next does not equal to null. Remember that this is only true if p is pointing to the last node. Otherwise, it's always true. Or this is only false if p is pointing to the last node. Otherwise, it's true. So we go into the body. Prev equals to p, p equals p.next, so prev equals to p doesn't change anything, but then p moves up, and then we subtract one from k. So just for our records, let's store the value of k over here. We know it's subtract by one, so it becomes one. We go up into the header again, while k is greater than zero, that's true. p dot next does not equal to null, that's also true. So we go here, prev equals to p, so now it points to the same node as it does. p equals p dot next, so p now points to our final node, subtract one from k, so k now equals to zero. We go up here, while k is greater than zero, but k equals zero, so that's false, so we skip past it. We check if k does not equal to zero, that's false because we know that k equals to zero. We go here, we check if prev equals equals to p. We can see that they're pointing at two different nodes, so that's false. So because it's false, we go into the else state, and it tells us prev.next equals p.next. 
we know that p.next over here is just null because it's pointing to the last node. So prefnext will also point to null. And how that's going to work is this will become an x. Now after this method finishes, you'll notice return cur, so it returns this part of the linked list. Java gets rid of all these pointers. There's nothing pointing to this node. Java destroys it. So we end up with this linked list with our two nodes. And we want to get rid of the last node. So this one also checks out. Two for three. All right, last one. K equals three. This is, as usual, false. We make our two pointers. So they both point to cur. Then we check while k is greater than zero. That's true. And let's just write it over here again for a reference. p.next does not equal to null. Also true. So prev equals to p, nothing happens. p moves up by one, and then we subtract one from k. Go up into this again. Both of these are true. Prev equals to p, so they point to the same node. p moves up by one again, and we subtract one from k again. All right, then we go up into here. k is greater than zero, that's true. But p.next does not equal to null. This is actually false, because p.next is null because p is now pointing to the last node in our linked list which is where we want this to stop so because this is false we break out the while statement we go here we check if k does not equal to zero and k is equal to one so this is actually true in this case all we have to do is return cur. this means we've made no modifications to our linked list whatsoever so we return the entire original linked list if we look at the value of k this makes sense because as you can see up here our linked list has a maximum index of two 3 is larger than 2, so no such node exists in our linked list. There's absolutely nothing for us to delete. So we did the right thing by returning the original linked list. And that, my friends, is 3 for 3. That's how Steph Curry does things. That's how we do things on this channel. Good stuff, as usual. Alright, folks, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out other common interview questions up here. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.